Fedora 35 was recently released. It is still one of the more popular desktop Linux distributions, and it also comes with an updated GNOME desktop version 41. And I believe that Fedora was one of the first distros uh, to actually get this update or to at least make it stable. Uh, I know that it wasn't updated in Arch Linux before Fedora. In fact, I still don't think uh, that it is as I'm recording this. I'm not really seeing uh, this is supposed to be uh, the package search for Arch Linux. I'm still not seeing uh, GNOME 40 there, but any of you guys that are running Arch Linux or an uh, Arch Linux variant, you can tell me uh, in the comments if GNOME 41 is stable in Arch Linux now. Uh, now, I'm not a huge fan of the GNOME desktop, but I know a lot of Linux users are, so bear with me as I try to show you all the new features uh, in this desktop environment. Uh, so the power options, which I believe were added in GNOME 40, um, like I believe they were in uh, the settings here, uh, but now you don't have to actually go into the settings to adjust them. You can just go ahead and adjust it uh, from right here. So this um, kind of looks like a speedometer, I guess, is the um, power options. Uh, so yeah, we can change that from um, balance to power saver. Uh, those are the two options that I have in the virtual machine. I think that there might be a um, performance option as well if you're on a laptop. But this is obviously a much more uh, convenient way to just access it from there. Uh, GNOME 40 also includes uh, connections, I believe by default. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is a new remote desktop client. So this is another really good uh, application to have, uh, especially if, for example, you're trying to get someone in your family who isn't really that tech savvy to start using GNU Linux they're probably going to need you to remote in from time to time to help them out, you know? That way they don't uh, like relapse and uh, go back to using Windows or Mac OS. Uh, and GNOME is really uh, one of those great desktops uh, for beginners, you know? It's laid out, I think, more similarly to Mac OS, which kind of throws me off since I'm coming from Windows. Um, but you know, that's fine. A lot of people like the Mac. Uh, so if you want to free someone in your family from proprietary software, and they like Mac OS, uh, then Fedora might be a good move. Um, there's also, if we go into the um, settings, uh, well, this won't show up because I'm in a virtual machine, but um, there is a mobile option now. It should be here underneath the uh, network option. Uh, so if you're using some type of device that has like LTE or four or 5G in there, you can go ahead and uh, change those connection settings uh, from the settings here instead of having to fiddle with it on a command line or anything like that. There's also a lot of under the hood improvements to GNOME to improve performance, uh, especially things along the lines of having the screen update in response to uh, keyboard and pointer input uh, because input lag is probably one of the most frustrating things that I think you could experience in a desktop environment. Um, now this only applies to the people who are using Wayland uh, with GNOME, which is the default display server in Fedora, and it actually has been since Fedora 25. Uh, that's another thing that you're uh, likely going to see getting uh, rolled out and kind of made more standard uh, to more Linux distros and made uh, the default display server, at least for the distros that uh, choose this type of thing for you. You know, the just works distros where you don't have to use the command line to set up a whole bunch of things. I'm sure in Gentoo and, you know, Arch derivatives, you're still going to be able to choose uh, all of that stuff. Um, now there's also some new uh, categorizations uh, in the software center. So I'll go ahead and um, bring that up. Uh, now, these categorizations are a little bit special. Uh, I think that this is an example of someone trying to make something really, really simple, but they make it too simple or so simple that you actually end up making it complicated. So like these are the categories uh, for the software in the software center, but they're kind of arbitrary. Like create and work, for example, 
These are two things that I feel almost mean the same thing, right? Uh, so for example, if your job is graphic design or video editing, right, I presume that uh, those types of things like GIMP or Kadian Live are going to be here underneath uh, Create. So yeah, like we see Blender is here, we see uh, GNU image manipulation uh, is here. Well, like I said, just you know, saying that this is creative and not uh, work is kind of arbitrary. I bet that this has LibreOffice in it. But what if you're a creative writer, right? What if uh, you know writing isn't really something that you do for work per se, uh, or it's just for school, right? You might be in school, but everything that you need to do for school is probably going to be in here, or maybe some of it's in here as well. Um, and then develop can even start getting into that as well, right? Because I, I guess this one's a bit more obvious. It's going to be, um, you know, like different things to do with coding, IDEs and whatnot. Uh, but if I wanted to just install something like, I don't know, a chat application, I have no idea where that's going to be in here. Or if I want to install a browser, I don't know where that's going to be. Like, uh, if I honestly had to guess, I think browser would be under work. Let's see if I was right. Um, no, doesn't look like it. Okay, maybe it's in Socialize. This is probably where a chat app would be too. I see one chat app there. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I see like torrenting applications, but I'm again, not seeing uh, any browsers. So yeah, this is a little bit confusing. Uh, not a huge fan of this categorization. And then of course, if you want to enable additional repositories, you can click on the hamburger menu here uh, and go to software repositories. And then you could just tick off, you know, whichever ones uh, you want to Go ahead and start using. Uh, they also added uh, Pipewire as the primary audio interface. Uh, so Pipewire has been gaining a lot of popularity. And I would expect other distributions that, at least the ones that make the choice of audio interface for you, uh, to start choosing Pipewire as well, since it has the most compatibility, uh, having support for Jack, Elsa, and Pulse Audio. Uh, Fedora 34 also comes with Wire Plumber, uh, which adds a number of benefits. Uh, so its drop-in replacement session manager for Pipewire implements the exact same features as the example session manager. Uh, it's got support for Lewis scripts, loadable modules, and better integration with uh, desktop settings. Uh, it should also make more practical things like properly detecting Bluetooth headphones easier, as well as let you use better quality codecs like AAC and APTX. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the browser next, which of course is Firefox. Uh, and I believe that it's using the latest version of Firefox. Uh, let's see. Yes, so we are using Firefox version 94, which just released on the stable channel yesterday as well. Uh, so there's some new features in this version of Firefox. One of the new features is this color palette thing. Uh, so it should make it easier for um, setting the colors exactly the way that you want it to be. You can do soft, balanced, bold. I think I'm gonna go for more of a, just a dark theme though. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, and then there's also some under the hood improvements as well. So Firefox started using EGL instead of GLX on Linux, uh, which should provide us with better performance and lower power usage. And there's also this new, uh, what is it, about unloads. Yeah, so this uh, basically lets you uh, unload tabs without uh, closing them. So they're still open, but uh, they're not really using uh, resources unless you go back to it and then it's going to uh, reload the tab and have it start using some resources again. Uh, and speaking of resources, why don't we go ahead and do a little uh, benchmark on Fedora real quick. Uh, let's do, let's see, I think HTOP is already installed on it. Uh, it is not, so let's see. Um, Actually, I'll go to applications because I think that there's some type of um, performance monitor. Yeah, system monitor. We'll just use that. Okay, so let's see how we're doing.
Okay, so we can see uh, this is drive usage. Go back to resources, here we go. So not too bad, I did uh, give it three uh, processor threads just because I know that uh, it's not a super heavy bloated distro, but you know, it's not super slimmed down either. Like we're not just uh, using the command line for this. Uh, for the memory, I gave it six gigs of RAM and it looks like with uh, a browser open, we're using just around 2.2. So this is pretty much what's to be expected uh, from most Linux distros, uh, you know, if you go really light with like a window manager, you could probably get it to about a gig with a browser open, uh, maybe slightly lower. But this is obviously a lot less than Windows uh, because that is the operating system that I usually compare the Just Works distros to because I think that that's uh, what most people are going to, or most of the people are going to be using Fedora uh, or switching to it, or probably going to be switching from something like that. I think. Um, I don't know, do people really, like long-term Linux users, really distro hop? I mean, I know some people might go from using Arch to Gentoo if they want to start messing with uh, use flags in different programs. But I think for the most part, once these days, once people start using Linux for a long time, they don't distro hop anymore. Uh, or at least I hope they don't. But overall, I think uh, Fedora looks Pretty neat, not the desktop for me, but I would definitely prefer that more people use Fedora instead of a proprietary operating system. Anyway, that's it for this one. Be sure to leave a like and comment to help hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.